stay tuned for this important tip. From our garden to yours. Everyone wants a lush green lawn. Is it really that hard to achieve? Well, I have an expert with me, Tom McCubbin, and he's going to tell us everything we need to know to wow. have a lush green lawn. <laughs> Tom, yeah, well, it's, is it hard? It's, it's not real hard, but you got to be consistent about what you're doing and give the lawn a little bit of care. And I think we're, uh, you know, the the wet weather, damp weather has helped out a lot also yeah, we've this had year. A lot of that's been very helpful, yep. I think. But you know, let's talk a little bit about the grasses people might have in their yards. Sure. Let's start with probably the most common right now, Number one, which Saint is St. Augustine. Augustine. This is what I have in my yard. Yeah, look at that coarse blade. People coming down from the north have a tough time with that one, but it runs out and it covers the area well, fills in. We can grow it from plugs, and it has one big problem, chinch bugs. Chinch bugs, and yeah. chinch bugs are harder and harder to control these days. Yeah, you're right. And, and it does need water, and it does need nutrients. It does. We can train it. We can get it off on a, you know, a little uh, lower water diet, but mm -hmm. it does need water. It look good, especially like this here. Let's mm -hmm. talk about this new exciting one that everybody's okay. planting we'll these days. Now that is a soft grass, and I think oh. it's what people think of, of northern, more northern grasses. That's the foot tickler, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are noticing also that they do get seed heads on our flower heads, and that's okay. When we mow it, they come off. We can mow it closer, about two inches. And look at that. All the grasses here, by the way, during the springtime took 26 degrees, but uh, look how they've come back. They, yeah, they just rebounded well. for us. Uh, about the same care as St. Augustine, but it's more drought tolerant. Drought tolerant, but drought tolerant means it's going to be brown yeah. when there is a drought. You let, take the water off of it, and it's going to go uh, brown, uh, but when it rains again and we water, it's going to come back again. So that's, yeah. that's a big plus. You have a tough one down I there. I do. I have Bahia, and Bahia um, is, is a grass that used to be planted quite a bit. Yeah. Um, very drought tolerant, will come back. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little more open. Mm -hmm. I think it's gaining popularity now because of its drought tolerance. People don't like it being open like this. Few pests, minimal feeding. During the summertime, you do have to mow it a lot because it gets the seed heads mm -hmm. on if you don't keep it clipped back like mm -hmm. this here. But it's a tough, durable grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the hair. And the last one that we have here, the Bermuda golf course grass. Because we're mowing it higher. On the golf course, they'll mow it down to you know very, very short. But uh, here we can see this is common Bermuda. And, and it's tough and durable, drought tolerant, but it probably gets every pest in the book yeah. and that becomes the problem. More fertilizer also. Well Tom let's take a look a little bit about what kind of care these grasses okay. are going to need. Sure. We've got I want to talk mostly about fertilizing mm -hmm. at least right now and you know now's the time of year we're fertilizing and this is a typical bag that we used to see, isn't it? That's a typical old fertilizer bag, 16% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, 8% uh, potassium, and the 4% is kind of disappearing on a number of these. It is, and what we're seeing more these days, I believe, are ones with a zero middle I number. I know, nothing in the bag, and that kind of scary? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the yards don't need it. I mean, this home site here was an old citrus grove, and we know that they had plenty of fertilizer on the grove, and the phosphorus is still there, only the nitrogen and the potassium is what's going to be uh, leaching out. Now, here's another one. I mean, some of these are real shocking numbers too, Celeste, like a 15-0-15. I mean, that's okay, right? That's perfect. It's really perfect. It means the nitrogen and the potassium are equal amounts. And, and we can do that with the bags. And the last one down there is the old 1648 Revitalize. And it's a 1608 that we see down there. So the fertilizers are changing. We're getting new products, and we just kind of have to adjust to that. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about how often we should we fertilize. Okay. Normally, you know, I really think lawns can get by once in the spring, once in the fall if we're using the slow release products. During the summertime, there are some regulations now about maybe not even fertilizing during the summer, but if you can, the lawn's a little bit yellow, you might put down iron or maybe a light feeding if the laws will let you do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they let you uh, between before June and after September. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we got a couple more things to look at, and one of them is water. Well, <laughs> and weeds. Let's go with the weeds <laughs> first. You know, I saved this patch of weeds just for you. Aww, <laughs> and this is heart leaf dry mary, yeah. which is going to probably, and weeds are always going to be a problem, aren't they? They're always going to be popping up. Uh, you know, always go through and look at lawns and you'll see the transition. You'll have weeds and you won't have weeds. But I do use a herbicide on this here. I use atrazine uh, to take them out and it goes out very quickly. Hi, furball. <laughs> and uh, this is our lawn cat. He has but, to be in the show. So, Tom, <laughs> thank you for sharing your tips about lawn care. And a couple things are important. Watering appropriately, fertilizing appropriately, and you can have a lawn just like Tom's. <laughs>